Resuming debate, the reprise de débat, the Honourable Member for South Okanagan, West Kootenai. Uh, well, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, first, I'd like to say that I'll be splitting my time with the member for Edmonton Strathcona. Today, we're uh, debating the government's proposal for a Canada Infrastructure Bank. In particular, today's NDP motion is asking the House to remove the clauses concerning the Canada Infrastructure Bank from Bill C-44, the 2017 Budget Implementation Bill Act, uh, so they can be studied as a standalone bill. I'd like to start with a short history of the proposal, then move on to some of the concerns that I have uh, about the Infrastructure Bank. You know, in the 2015 election, the Liberal platform stated that they would, and I quote, establish the Canada Infrastructure Bank to provide low-cost financing for new infrastructure projects. The federal government can use its strong credit rating and lending authority to make it easier and more affordable for municipalities to build the projects their communities need, unquote. Now, this wasn't one of those high-profile promises like electoral reform that the Liberals have since broken, and it seems to be an entirely reasonable promise to make, using public money wisely to build and maintain public infrastructure. Unfortunately, the plan has changed radically. In the latest budget, the government reveals that the infrastructure bank will involve $35 billion, $15 billion of which is public money. The rest will come from private investment banks and funds that expect a sizable return on their investments and a real say in the priorities of where that money is invested. So to start off with, do we need such a private infrastructure bank in Canada? Do we need to pay more for infrastructure projects? Do we need to pay tolls and extra fees? And do we need to give up the planning control of where our money is spent on public infrastructure? Well, according to a study by researchers at the Institute of Fiscal Studies and Democracy, the federal government could build even more infrastructure simply by borrowing at preferred rates, then passing the savings on to cities and provinces. And that's exactly what the Liberals promised in the last election. The government seems to be doing this for only one reason, to take the credit for infrastructure projects they had little or nothing to do with, projects that will profit wealthy investment bankers, projects funded by taxpayers paying extra tolls and fees, and all the while taking the costs off government books so their fiscal record looks better than it is. I'd like to look a little more closely at some of the concerns surrounding the Canada Infrastructure Bank proposal, and first among these is that unnecessary added cost that it would bring to public infrastructure projects. As the Liberals pointed out in their election promises, the federal government can use its strong credit rating to access funds to help provinces and municipalities move forward with infrastructure projects that will benefit all Canadians. So why bring in private investment firms that will demand higher returns? You're simply adding a middleman who wants a profit. Now, as we've heard earlier in, in various speeches, the Liberal government recently commissioned a study by KPMG to look into the infrastructure bank idea. It obviously didn't like the answers it, they got since they initially refused to release the report. One of the points the report makes is that Canadians don't like paying extra fees and tolls for the use of public infrastructure, something that really shouldn't come as a surprise, especially when those fees and tolls wouldn't be paying back public monies used for the project but instead paying for profits to investment bankers. The report mentions the pushback that the government might get if we char start charging fees for water use. It points out that private investors internationally have only taken on municipal water assets after the community adopted full costing and metering of water use. Now, in my writing, water meeting is already in effect in many communities simply because water is a precious commodity in the dry interior of southern British Columbia. And paying for use instead of per household is a strong incentive for water conservation. And the people are paying for their, paying their own municipal governments, not a private corporation for that water use. This example points to the fact that private investors are simply interested in making a profit rather than getting involved for the public good. Every municipality in Canada has ongoing infrastructure maintenance and operating costs that they must bear every year. And small rural municipalities and regional districts 
are already struggling with per capita costs that are much higher than those in larger cities. So it makes no sense to them to embrace an, an infrastructure bank that will in inevitably cost their citizens even more in the long term. What they need is a federal government that will provide the funding they need in the form of grants or low interest loans, just as the Liberals promised in their election platform, not through a private infrastructure bank. And small municipalities in rural Canada are also concerned that $15 billion has been taken out of the infrastructure pot and put in a bank that will probably not be that interested in funding small town projects. In recent years, governments across the country have been undertaking public-private partnerships, P3s, despite the obvious fiscal and control problems that come with them. A couple of years ago, the Auditor General in my home province of British Columbia found that provincial taxpayers were on the hook for about $31 million in extra interest rates on one project alone, the Fort St. John Hospital, representing the private equity in the project borrowed at an interest rate of 14.79%, which led one journalist to wonder if the BC Liberals had put the charge on their visa card. That, the amount that BC taxpayers pay every year for the extra interest costs of PPP projects has been calculated at $81 million. Now, I don't have time to go into all the other concerns about this proposal. Concerns about the privatization of airports, concerns about the lack of public oversight, the lack of public input into the priorities of the infrastructure bank, the lack of public involvement in the board of the bank, Concerns that the people who the Liberals are getting to design the system are the very people, wealthy investment bankers, who will benefit from it. And the rush to get this started. The jobs are already posted on the government website before this bill has even been fully debated in the House, let alone passed through the House and Senate. The KPMG study I mentioned earlier calls for careful study of the infrastructure bank proposal, but instead this government is trying to rush this through with only two hours of committee hearings. We all know what you can do in a committee in two hours, maybe hear from six witnesses who have 10 minutes to speak each and answer a few questions. This is entirely inadequate to cover the myriad of concerns about this proposal. And we're talking about a lot of money here, $35 billion. Now the Liberals might point out that that's merely the amount of the annual budget deficit, but to Canadians it's a big number, especially when it will be the extra tolls and fees that they will be paying to fund this investment. The Minister has said that he is, and I quote, not hearing concerns from those on whose behalf we are doing this. Well, we're doing this on behalf of the citizens of Canada, and I'm hearing concerns from my constituents. So I'm left to wonder who the Minister has been listening to and who he thinks we're doing this for. In conclusion, we in the NDP feel that the Canadian Canada Infrastructure Bank proposal needs to be taken out of Bill C-44 and thoroughly studied as a separate standalone bill. That way Canadians can provide some input into a major change in government policy, a change that will unnecessarily cost Canadian taxpayers a great deal of money, while at the same time giving up public oversight into how that public money is spent and which public infrastructure projects move forward. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Question.